Hey all you people, what is going on? Welcome to another episode of Not So Handy Car Guy, where we learn about cars together. Okay, so there's a lot of things wrong with this Honda Pilot behind me. You may have seen it in the previous video, I'll uh, link to that right there. And really I just wanted a car for the Gambler 500 and I was like, hey, I, if I can get this for four or 500 bucks, if the four wheel drive still works, you know, I bet that'd be a pretty good car, right? Because it still runs and drives. But I was trying to figure out the, like this whole misfire stalling issue. So bear with me to see if the four wheel drive works. You're gonna see a spark plug change, coil change, and then a little intake cleaning. And then I will lift it up behind me right here and see if the four wheel drive actually does still work. What on earth happened, Eric? Stump. You hit a stump? Yeah. I have a surprise for you. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, it must be the coils. Today, we have an 06 Honda Pilot that has a very bad misfire. Uh, you can take a look here at all the misfire codes I got when I plugged in the fix-it tool. It also has a very, very bad exhaust leak uh, at the downpipe but it gives you an opportunity to listen to the misfire uh, in one of its loudest forms. So, take a listen to this. All right. Yes, it's pretty bad. We're just gonna go through and replace the ignition coils and we're gonna replace the spark plugs because he hasn't changed either of those in over 180,000 miles of ownership. Currently, it's at around 286,000 miles on the tack. So this thing is still kicking the bucket. I'm excited, I'm very excited to see how these look. It's actually not that bad. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my. God, look at how bad that one is. That one's not that bad though. I mean, all things considered. Now, let's see if I can get to the back ones easily. This shouldn't be too bad. If you're having a small socket wrench really helps. Oh my God, you should have seen the placement of the ignition coils on. Sam's mom's Camry. It's like they don't want you to ever change the spark plugs. Okay. What? That was so easy. These, these wire harnesses are easy to pinch and take off. Still not too bad though. A little burnt. And yeah, but still, this one is amazing. Yeah, that is grimy. Last one, cool. We got a little, little bit of anti-seize grease. Right, look at those new coils. Other ones. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. Ready? Ugh. Aw, this is called friendship. All right, come on. That's not good. We know that plugs and coils are good because I just changed them. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna take off this whole intake manifold cover here because apparently there's some passageways that can get clogged up 
it's worth a shot, right? And then after that, if it does run a little better, I'm gonna jack it up in the jack stands and see if all four wheels turn, because Eric said that the four wheel drive wasn't really working, but I haven't found anything online as to why that could be. Oh man, this is proving difficult to come off. I've got a couple of wedges in there, but the back half just does not wanna pop off. Okay, I am an idiot. There was one bolt here that was holding the whole thing in place. So now, wow, look at that. Easy as pie. So although it's not terrible, there is a little bit of gunk in here. So we'll clean that out. I don't know if this hose is being clogged up at all. And the actual inside of the intake manifold is pretty dirty. Um, you got these gaskets here that are just kind of crap. Let's do this. Let's make a plan of action. I guess I'm just gonna spray this stuff too so I can then wipe it down. All right, I guess I'll let this sit for a little bit. Using some of this intake valve and turbo cleaner by CRC. Um, this should, in theory, help get rid of some of these nasty deposits. Sorry, spray it on this cover here. I'm gonna spray it in all these little nooks and crannies. I just sprayed it into this little, what is this, like an evap hose or something like that. And it seemed kind of clogged. Maybe that's part of our culprit right there. What? Oh my God. It's not perfect, but as you can see, it is a whole heck of a lot better than it was before. I may have used a couple paper towels in the process. So now we're gonna go get some gasket maker from O'Reilly's and throw the top back on and see how it runs, huh? I'm just gonna re-gasket this thing with some of the gasket stuff I bought. Everything is sealed back up. I just hand tighten the outside bolts there because that's what the directions said to do. Hit the plans to let this dry. Um, and then we're gonna crank down the outside bolts. Alrighty, it is the next day. Oh yeah, nice and rubbery. Shit. Just got to clip on this intake boot here. Shall we see if it starts? I'm gonna have to jump it again though. Um, um you should get away, question mark. Oh. What is that? That's all the carbon stuff I sprayed. Oh! I, I forgot that was gonna happen. Dude, that smells so bad. Wanna take it for a rip? This? Other than the exhaust, it's really not running that bad. Eh, it's a little shaky. I love how our driveway has basically become a parking lot slash used car lot. <laughs> First things first, can you see that rear wheel right there? The back is off the ground on jack stands and we're gonna turn the other rear wheel, the passenger side rear wheel, to see if this one turns in the opposite direction. If it does, it is a functioning open differential. If it does not, it is not a functioning open differential. Okay, that didn't work, this one. Something ain't working right in the rear end of this thing. 
You know, just for funsies though, let's put them up. Let's start it up, see what happens. I'll block the VTM4. Stable enough. Okay. Am I the only one who's confused? Why is the front wheel spinning at regular speed? It looks like it's spinning backwards. And the back one is spinning, but not hard enough at all. And this one's not spinning at all. All right, so, oh, come on, this light doesn't work. All right, this one does. This VTM button just isn't working. I know you have to be in second or first. So if we go to first, hopefully it'll install out. VTM, VTM. I don't, I don't think there's a traction control button anywhere. I don't know, man. Put it back into drive. Not really going. All right, put it in neutral. E brakes all the way in. E brake is off. See, now this one is still spinning, and the rear ones are not at all. Maybe it's because I just hit the um, e brake. It may have seized up a little bit in the back. Oh, yeah, that one's stuck. Let me know in the comments below what you think is wrong with this thing as far as drivetrain goes. Uh, if you made a list of everything, it'd be too long to post. Hey, maybe while I have it up on here, I could throw it in reverse and then roll back the miles. What do you think? Conclusion. Um, I don't know what's wrong with it. Uh, it might be injectors. Um, I don't know. Maybe there's a head gasket thing. We got a little compression. I'm not a mechanic. We're learning together. Since this four wheel drive isn't working, I don't think it's gonna be a good gambler car because um, it's a whole off-road course challenge rally thing. So I guess I'm gonna have to keep my eye out for something we can actually use for that. Maybe if we can figure out the whole overheating issue with Bob's Jeep. <laughs> yeah, like I said, let me know in the comments below what you think this could be and how we could fix it. Uh, let me know if it's too far gone, because it might be.